Okay, so what's up, Turmo Kedut? This is your host, Cedric Kasensai, and magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. Time check, it's already 3.14 in the afternoon. Medyo late kami. Kasi hindi ko napansin yung... <laughs> yung ano yan, yung, yung chat na itong apat na to. Alas dos pala sila po, mga kapatid. <laughs> Nag-chat sa akin. Medyo busy ako kaka-ano yan. Kaka-edit ng ano yan, ng music video. Anyway, so, ladies and gentlemen, ang topic natin ngayong araw... Dito po sa facilitating learner-centered teaching is about module 18 which is problem solving and creativity. So I think isa to sa mga niyan medyo critical na subjects dito po or let's say topics dito sa facilitating learner-centered teaching. Okay? Sa module pa lang medyo uh, niyan medyo tawag ba dito? Nasa dulo na to. So nagtataka yung mga viewers natin kung bakit hindi tayo pa sunod-sunod. Okay? Because Ah, uh, hinati ko yung modules sa uh, Bsed Math tapos sa Bsed 3A and 3B para mas mapadali natin yung pag-discuss. So, kung pare-pareho kasi yan, <laughs> ano tawag ba dito? Mauubos yung ano yan, yung time natin sa uh, tawag ba dito sa curricular duration natin. Uh, tapos hindi pa natin mauubos yung topic, uh, di ba? So importante na meron tayong division of labor. Okay? So ladies and gentlemen, okay? So ngayong hapon po, meron po akong apat na discussions. Okay? Four. We have four core discussions for this afternoon's topic which is module 18 and that is problem solving and creativity. Okay? So ipapa ano yan? Papakilala natin sila. Ito po ba? Nandiyan na sila. Ayan. So, ang gaganda ng ating mga niya, discussant. All the way from Bachelor of Elementary Education 3B. Ayan. So, nandiyan sila. Angie, itas-taas mo yung camera mo. <laughs> medyo na, medyo na puputol. Ayan. Medyo na puputol siya. Ayan. Putol pa ba eh. <laughs> ko nakikita mo. <laughs> Natakat mo pala konti. <laughs> Okay, so anyway, so ladies and gentlemen, uh, pakilala natin ang ating mga discussant for today's topic, okay, which is module 18, and that is problem solving and creativity. Okay, to start with, ayan, nice na siguro ni ma'am. Okay, so tingnan natin kung nandito silang lahat. Okay, so first of all, we have ma'am Angeline Formento. Hello ma'am, bati ka po. Hello, good afternoon everyone. Okay ma'am, batiin natin ang ating mga ka barangay. Come on. Hello barangay manga. Ah, manga si. Wasalbay. Oh, okay. So aran di ka mo yan sa kwad sa Sulong. <laughs> Ay hindi man po sir. Amar ah, di ka mo yoran. Okay, so shout out po sa mga taga barangay manga Wasalbay. Okay, so thank you very much Ma'am Angeline Formento, okay? And we also have here Ma'am Nicole Kayla Destura. Hello Ma'am. Good afternoon, everyone. <laughs> okay, batiin mo yung baby dyan sa likod. <laughs> pamanggin ko yan, sir. Ah, pamanggin mo. Okay, mambati natin yes, natin po. mga kabarangay. Come on. Hello sa mga ano. Barangay Busa. Ah, si Uwas, ha? Uwas. Yes, sir. Busa okay, so shout out sa mga taga-barangay Busa, Uwas, Albay. Ayan. So, kaya pala kayo magkakagrupo. Magkaranigan mga barangay ninyo, no? <laughs> mga yes, taga-Uwas. Okay, so thank you very much, Ma'am Nicole. Kaila Distura, okay? And we have Ma'am Hannah Teresa Tanay. Ma'am, bati ka po. Hello, sir. Good afternoon, everyone. Okay, taga saan si Ma'am? Um, taga San Francisco, Nabuaca, Marini Sur. Oh, okay, Rinconada. So, shout out sa mga taga yeah. Nabua. Okay. Ka Marini Sur, Mas masala pa ako sa Bigo Pinta. <laughs> Albay. Tama. So, Nabua. Anong barangay, Ma'am, ulit? San Francisco. Okay, shout out sa mga taga barangay San Francisco, Nabua. Kamarini Sur, okay. Ayan. So, ayo, so meron tayong one from Rinconada, okay? Okay, let's proceed po sa ating last discussion. We have Ma'am Josie Rapay Bardi. Hello, Ma'am. Hi, Sir. Good afternoon. Okay, Ma'am. Batingin natin na ating mga kabaranggay. Come on. Shout out sa mga taga-barangay Busak o Was Albay. Ah, okay. So, shout out ulit sa inyo mga taga-barangay Busak. So, ladies and gentlemen, we have three from Was Albay and one from Nabwa Kamarin, sir. Right? So, sila po yung ating mga discussants for today's topic, which is all about Module 18, Problem Solving, and Creativity. Okay? Mga ka-eduk, viewers right there. Huwag kayong aalis. We'll be right back.
Okay, so what's up ulit dyan, mga ka-eduk? So magandang hapon sa inyong lahat. Medyo maulan, malamig. But anyway, it's time for you right now to watch our Bura-Bura live stream. Kayo dito lang po sa ating Facilitating Learner Center teaching. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, let's proceed now po sa ating first discussion. Okay? So ladies and gentlemen, okay, so I'm now giving the floor to Ma'am Nicole Kayla Destura. Ma'am, it's your turn na po. So, my topic is so. So we are the module 18 discussions about problem solving and creativity. And my topic is all about problem solving. So we have the objectives. Um. Sir, and sir, di ka mapas. Hindi mo mabasa. <laughs> Sabi ko sa iyo, dapat mayroon kang copy. <laughs> ano ba? Ayan na. Ayan na. Oh. Oh, ayan na oh. Oh, sige. Ayan, basa. <laughs> Wait, sir. Hindi ko yeah. mabasa, sir. <laughs> Hindi mo mabasa? Ayan. Ako na lang magbabasa. <laughs> sige, sir. <laughs> Hindi mabasa din mo, babe. Okay. So, ayan na. Oh. So, ang objectives natin, ladies and gentlemen, is ayan. We're able to explain the four criteria of creativity by Torrens. Okay, of course, practice creative teaching. Uh, sorry, practice creative, tama, creative thinking and apply problem-solving skills. Okay, let's proceed, ma'am. Ako na nagbasa. <laughs> Matas yung points ko dun, ha. <laughs> okay. So, ayan guys, problem solving and creativity have four um, topics. The first one is problem solving, which uh, which will be discussed by me. Then the next one is Torrance Creativity Framework. Miss um, Josie Rapay Barde will discuss it. Then the next one is um, problem solving by um, Angeline. Then yung ideal model kay Miss Hannah Tara Satanay. Okay, let's proceed, ma'am. Problem solving. So, problem solving, guys. Do you know what is problem solving? Uh, from the word itself, um, solving our problems. But I will read um, the definition of it in the Google, um, which <laughs> is, um, it is the act of defining a problem, um, determining the cause of the problem, identifying prioritizing and selecting alternative for a solution and implementing a solution. So, under the ano, problem solving, we have this Edward Paul Torrance. Um, Edward Paul Torrance, um, known as the father of creativity, for his nearly 60 years of research that became the framework for the field of gifted education. He was Professor Emeritus of Educational Psychology. He invited the benchmark method for quantifying creativity. So, and according to Edward Paul Torrance, um, the Torrance test of creativity helped shatter the theory that IQ tests alone were gauge, I were sufficient to gauge real intelligence. So, for the meaning of it, guys, um, um, kunya, some people are um, good in you know enumeration because they're good in memorization but they're mm. not good in essay and impromptu questions in Q&A then some um, students are good in that in that kind of um, type of exam like essay um, answering a questions but they're not good in enumeration because their memorization um, is not sufficient is not mm. um you know, like the others. So, according to uh, Edward Paul Torrance, his test of creati uh, creative uh, um, will measure the real intelligence. It's like, it's like according to him, that test solidified where here to four was only conceptual, namely that creative levels can be scaled, scaled or made up, improved, and then increase through practice. So, ayun guys, mm -hmm. nai-improve daw yung mga talino ng mga bata. Kung familiar kayo guys, alam niyo yung ano, late blooming. Mm -hmm. Yung 
alay nyo, hindi siya matalino, pero nung lumaki na, doon mo makikita, ay na, matalino pala tong batang to. So, yun yung, ano na eh, ano, Edward Paul Torrance na, um, the test of creative thinking. Okay. So, next guys, um, advanced organizer. So, uh, sa advanced organizer guys, pra- are the under the problem solving um, or creativity is the Torrance creativity framework and creative pre- problem solving or CPS. So, under the Torrance creative um, framework, we have the fluency, flexibility, um, elaboration, and originality. While on the creative problem solving or CPS, we have the six stages of CPS. This organizer will be discussed by my um, next group mate, which is Miss Josie Rapay Barden. Oh, yes. So, thank you very much, Ma'am Nicole. Yeah, this Tura. Ah, yes, Ma'am. So, let's have a little ano yan, uh, recap here. So, ladies and gentlemen, so as you can see, okay, so in-explain ni Ma'am kanina, Okay, yung um, concern regarding po sa problem solving. Sabi ni ma'am, kung paano daw mag-solve ng problema, tama naman. <laughs> tama talaga, kung paano mag-solve ng problema. Yun nga lang, according dito, sabi ni ma'am, hindi lang yung ganun kadali. ba? Diba? According to, to Edward Paul Torrance, ayan. So, sabi niya dito, kinakailangan natin na, ayan, para masolve itong problema to, we need actually a, ayan, Torrance test of creative thinking, okay? So, it is help for the students to at least, or the teachers, okay? To know, understand the students' um, IQ or intelligence quotient. ba? Diba? Tama yung sabi ni ma'am. Kaya hindi naman lahat ng estudyante talaga magaling ngayon. Alam niyo nangyari yan sa akin eh. Alam niyo, totoo nangyari yan. Ang... Um, Tin- natry ko na yan. Natry nyo rin to eh. Merong mga IQ test sa internet. Nung una mong try ang bag- bagsak. <laughs> bagsak talaga. Sus ko naman yung simple akapatal ko man. <laughs> ano ginawa ko? Nagpractice ako ulit. Another. Naubos ko yung 50 questions. Yes, perfect. 200 IQ. <laughs> Ganon kalupet. Okay, so pero, okay, since, tinakailangan kasi dito is uh, ito mga uri ng ganitong exam. Okay, where pwede siyang gamitin for diagnostic purposes. Okay? Para masuka talaga kung saan yung level ng estudyante on the first semester or let's say on the first quarter of the subject or the curriculum. Kasi kung yung estudyante mataas talaga ang IQ, okay? Kung alam niyo yung estudyante mataas yung IQ, hindi talaga siya dun para sa klase na yon. Kaya meron tayong tinatawag na acceleration program or yung ano yan, yung ta- ano yun tawag doon? Tama ba yon? yung nag yung instead na grade 1 siya ililipat eh, sa grade 2. Ano nga tawag niyo doon, guys? Accelerated learning, sir? Oo, 'di ba? May mga ganun. So dito pa lang malalaman na natin kung talagang ang um, yung estudyante ay medyo okay, um uh, fast learner or sabi kanina ni Ma'am, kung talagang medyo mabagal, slow learner. 'Di ba, Ma'am? Kaya ito, pwede itong mangyari, okay? That according to Ma'am kanina is Pwede yung estudyante ngayon mahina, mamaya-maya, or let's say, for a while, na medyo di latent, hindi masyadong ano yan, ang nag improve yung learning. Pero pagdating ng college, boom! Yan, late bloomer pala. So, may mga ganun talaga pong mga uh, learners. Okay? So, thank you very much, Ma'am Nicole. Let's do it. Okay? So, ladies and gentlemen, okay, wag kayong aalis and we will be right back. Okay, so what's up there ulit mga ka-edit? This is your host, Shadrick Kasentai, and time check, it's already 
in the afternoon. Okay? So, medyo mahaba-haba ang ating topic ngayon. Okay? At least, I think we have 1 and 30 minutes of discussion. Okay? Now, to start this, bago pa mag-brown out si Apek. <laughs> Sige na. Okay. So, last time po kanina, recap tayo. Okay? Idiniscuss po ni Ma'am regarding po doon sa introduction ng kay Torrance. Okay? Ang IQ test. Okay? Yung kung paano po mag-solve or let's say malaman ang problem-solving skills ng bata. And of course, right now po, we have the Torrance Framework of Creativity. Okay? So, let's proceed na po sa ating next discussant. We have Ma'am Josie Rapay Barden. Ma'am, it's your turn po. Yes, sir. So, to proceed with, we have Torrance Framework of Creativity. Next, sir. So, first framework is fluency. So, fluency refers to the production of a great number of ideas. Take note, guys, a great number of ideas wherein mm. it is an alternate solution to a problem. So, fluency underst- implies understanding not just to remember me information that is learned. So, pag fluency, hindi lang siya basta-basta, ay, kabisado ko tong ano na to context na to. Hindi po yun ganun. So, what if tinanong ka kung ano, what about that context? Mm-hmm. So, kailangan naiintindihan mo yung binasa mo. Tama. So, we have keywords in fluency framework. So, here pa next po. Okay. So, the keywords are compare, convert, count, define, describe, label, explain. So, those are the keywords that we can use in terms of fluency in Torrance framework. So, next framework, I by the way, we have also application activities that is intended for fluency framework. So, we have first, we have three is the pictures and label, label its parts. So, sa elementary grades, we this is mo familiar kasi yung mga especially ano grade 1 to grade 3 may mga activities diyan na nire-require na i-label and, and i-trace yung parts mm-hmm. para ano ma-determine kung saan na ba talaga yung kakayahan ng bata. Tama. So we also have outline an article that you find on your topic. So this is also for intermediate grades naman. So yung mga pagbabasa ng mga articles. And then, how many uses can you think of the clothes in a hanger? So, yan yung mga p- possible activities that we can do para ma-test natin yung, flexi- yung fluency ng students. Okay. So, next framework is yan. flexibility. So, when we talk about flexibility, it is the production of ideas that show a variety of possibilities. So, or realms of thought. It involves the ability to see things from different point of views, to use different approaches or strategies. Sa flexibility naman, guys, dito na papasok yung mga possibilities sa, is- sa isang, ano, in a certain situation. So, we have keywords like change, demonstrate, or distinguish. Doon na yung mga possibilities na mga what if, yung mga possible na mangyayari. Okay. So, the application of ideas are what what would happen if there were no automobiles? So, sa question na to, papasok na yung ano, maraming possibilidad o maraming possibilities na mga answers. Diba? Yep. So, next is how would a dog look to a flea? Look like to a flea? Mm-hmm. So, pag mga bata, ganito yung mga tanungan eh. <laughs> Yo, ano kaya yung itsura ng ganto sa compare sa ganitong animals, di ba sir? Yes po. So and mga then, kapatid, okay, linawin natin sa mga baka nilito mga ka-educ natin mga viewers. Okay, this is part po ng at aniyan ng cognitive and the metacognitive okay, thinking skills. Okay, mataas na po to. <laughs> okay, baka na yan. Baka na, na nawawala yung mga viewers natin. Medyo mataas na po to, okay? So ba, kasi yung nangyari sa atin medyo mataas yung module module tapos medyo mababa na alternate okay so linawin lang natin po nasa metacognition na po ito okay let's proceed ma'am so another exa- another application of ideas is how would you group the ideas of red 
into categories. Yan. So, ayan na. As you can see sa example, may mga, nag-group na, na yung mga, ano, according to their categories. So, next framework is elaboration. Sa elaboration naman, dito na papasok yung process of enhancing ideas provided that there are more details. So, addition detailed and clarity improves interest in and understanding of the topic. So, sa elaboration na, dito na papasok yung paano mo maipapahayag ng mabuti yung, ano, yung context. Mm. Na provided na may material na. So, i-elaborate mo para mas maintindihan palalo ng students. Dito rin, pag na-elaborate mong masyado, mas, ano, mas pumapasok na, mas nakaka-catch mo yung interest and attention ng learners. Yes, so, the tama. keywords are appraise, critic, determine, evaluate, grade, judge, measure, select, and test. So, in application of activities, elaboration are, dito nagpapasok yung tell your neighbor about your last Family trip using many detail in possible. So, pag ba diba sa question na to, i-elaborate natin kung ano yung mga mga nangyari Mm-mm. about the last trip, ba? Diba? Mm-hmm. So, pag i-elaborate na kung ano nangyari, mm-hmm. then dito na papasok yung makikinig ng mabuti yung yung learners or yung kakausap mo. Okay. So, an- another is, what you can do, what you can add to to improve its ig- quality or performance. So, i-elaborate mo kung ano mga yung mga pwede mong ma-add para mas ma-improve yung quality or performance of specific things. Okay. So, next is, next, ano, trade framework is originality. So, originality, dito na papasok yung uniqueness of uh, things wherein It involves synthesis or putting information about a topic back together in a new way. So, parang for yung, yung topic, gagawan mo siya ng new information based from the existing topic or information. So, the keywords are compose, create, design, generate, integrate, Modify, rearrange, reconstruct, reorganize, and revise. So, syempre may ano din, may application activities din sa originality. Where hindi na papasok yung example na find an original use for. So, kailang, kaya, kailangan nga yung ano, think of original use of a certain things. So, another is... What would what would be the strangest way to get out of bed? Nga naman. And another example is design a new blank that is better than one you have. So dito na papasok yung creative th- creative and critical thinking sa originality. Yon. So that's it for the Torrance framework of creativity. So we have fluency, flexibility, originality and elaboration. That's all. Okay, thank you very much, ma'am. Ayos, well said. So, ladies and gentlemen, okay? So, dandahin natin ulit, ulit ito, ha? Kasi, <laughs> pero talaga nawawala. Wala na mga classmate ninyo, okay? So, shout out ulit sa mga nanonood natin. <laughs> nanonood sa atin ngayong hapon, okay? So, sinabi kanina ni ma'am that this Torrance, uh, Torrance Framework of Creativity, okay? So, we have first fluency. Okay? Kung mapapansin ninyo, dito sa mga ginagamit na words, ito po yung gagamitin ninyo, ladies and gentlemen, pag kayo ay magko-conduct or less gagawa na ng objectives sa lesson planning. Okay, mga ka-edo, baka, al, di ko pa sinasabi sa inyo, no? Ang final output po ninyo dito is lesson plan. <laughs> okay po. Kaya dito napapasok po, ha? Ah, yan. Nireveal ko na yung inyong final exam, no? Di pa nga tayo nag-midterm. <laughs> okay. So, anyway, if you're going to go back to the keywords, the fluency, dyan pa lang, malalaman ninyo that we have, Okay. And how many yung know, papasok dyan? So, nakalagay po dyan is compare, convert, count, define, describe, explain, identify, label, list, match, name, outline, paraphrase, predict, summarize. So, medyo madali-dali pa to. 
Kasi ang word na fluency, it's just about Uh, let's say memorization or lay uh, let's say familiar uh, familiarization tama so yung mga konsepto it's just about uh, more on the cognitive aspect okay so mamaya pahirap yun ng pahirap okay so hindi pwede kasi pa- pa- padali ng padali pahirap talaga ng pahirap pero start tayo sa medyo okay Ma- madali muna okay let's proceed dito yung susunod is flexibility Okay? So, sabi dito sa flexibility, we have change. Naku po. Demonstrate. Ayan. Na- nareparo ninyo? Ito yung gagawin, guys, ng bata, hindi ng teacher, ha? <laughs> gagawin to ng, ng, mga, ng kids. The, the, the learners. The learners are the one uh, um, which is uh, who are the one supposed to perform these activities because it is part of your objectives. Change. Demonstrate. Distinguish. Iba yung, iba yung word na differentiate at distinguish. Ibang-iba po yun. Diba? Iba naman po yung um, employ, then uh, extrapolate, okay? Meron interpolate, interpret, and predict. O napansin ninyo? Medyo mabigat na to, no? Medyo mabigat-bigat na. So, pataas ng pataas yung level dito pagdating sa flexibility, okay? Then, papasok naman tayo sa elaboration. Sa elaboration naman, we have this one here. Sabi dyan, appraise. Alam nyo ba yung word na appraise, guys? Ladies, anyone from you? You know the word appraise? Ginagamit lang kasi to alam niyo kung saan, di ba? Alam niyo kung saan to ginagamit, yung word na appraise, appraisal. Yung mga nagche-check ng quality ng jamante, ng ginto, oh, ayan, mag-appraise ngayon kami ngayon ng mga bagong kwan. Kasi yung asawa ko nagtrabaho dati sa si Emily Willier, so alam niya kung paano mag-appraise, mag-check kung kung 12 karat yan o 14 karat yung gold. Alam nila yon, di ba? So, in terms of educational ano yan, context, pag sinabi natin ng appraise, yung paano mag mag ano yan, mag Let's say, mag-justify kung yung isang gawa is quality. Okay? Kaya kung gagawa ng rubrics, ito dapat nakalagay sa holistic rubrics natin. Dapat may word dyan, ah, to appraise. Or let's say, ap- appraising. Kasi, um, kapag gumamit kayo ng mga ganitong uri ng uh, word, uh, objectives you have, appraise, critic, determine, evaluate, tatandaan nyo ulit, okay, that's elaboration. So, ibig sabihin, Ipapaliwanag nyo dito, yan, kung ano yung mas naintindihan ng bata sa topic, it's, it's more malalim, mas malalim na konsepto ng topic. Hindi lang yung to define, to describe, madali lang yun, doon lang yun sa fluency. Dito po sa ano yan, critic, determine, evaluate, iba, iba, ibang uri na to eh. Okay? So, pwede nga natin dito idagdag yung word na infer. Pwede gumawa ng bagong information out of the ano yan. Okay, yun nga lang, yung infer po, mas babagay siya dun sa susunod. This one, sa originality. Mas bagay siya dyan. Okay? So, tingnan natin ito. Okay? Tingnan nyo yung mga keywords. Compose, create, decide, generate. Okay? Pag ito ang ginamit ng teacher, yung estudyante, masakit na daw sa ulo. Bakit? Gumawa daw kayo ng essay. <laughs> Pag gumawa, mga bata, pagkatapos ng gawain, gumawa ng isang teksto. Teksto ay bumubuo ng limang... <laughs> ano yan? Um, ano nga yung paragraph sa Tagalog? <laughs> kalimutan ko. Talata. Na. Yan. Apat na talata na, bu- apat na talata na mayroong apat na pangungusap. Bawat isa. ba diba? Ganon. So, meron din to design. Yung word na design, pwedeng gamitin to for sa TLE. Okay? Kung sa ano yan, home economics naman, yung pwede kayong magpa-design. Okay? More or less kasi sa arts, hindi ko magamit ang word ng design eh. Sa elementary level, more on kwan lang dyan is to draw. Okay? Build. Yan. 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 Pero sa high school, gumagamit na po ng word na design. Even sa college. Diba? Generate po, okay? Um, alam nyo na ibig sabihin ng generation, ibig sabihin, it's either um, ito yung magkagawa ng something out of ano yan, um, material or raw materials. And we also have to integrate, modify. This is actually for ano yan. Pwede na to sa science and mathematics. Rearrange, reconstruct, reorganize, revise. So, ibig sabihin, pataas ng pataas yung level ng competency na lumalabas po dito. That is originality. Mahirap-hirap nga talaga ang originality. Kung mapansin nyo guys yung Bloom's Taxonomy, yung Revised Bloom's Taxonomy, nasa yung originality? Nasa lower order thinking or nasa higher order? Kung nanood kayo nung live stream natin last, ano yan, last time, saan siya nakalagay? Sa lower order thinking skill or sa higher order thinking skill? ba? Diba? Yung originality... Okay? It's part of creation eh, sa creativity. Saan siya doon? Di ba nasa dulo na yan? Yung creativity? Okay? So, ibig sabihin, pataas ng pataas yung level ng estudyante. So, remember, yung topic ni ma'am, it's about 
the framework of creativity. So in short, this is already on the metacognitive part, the higher order thinking skill. Kaya kung mapapansin ninyo mga viewers, medyo mahirap na po yung mga verbs. Okay? So, matanong ko ang ating discussant, ma'am. Saan natin ito ma'am pwedeng gamitin itong framework of creativity sa... Ayan. Sige, come on. So, oh. so the... Torrance Framework of Creativity. Magagamit siya natin, sir, in doing our lesson plan. So, magagayad tayo nito upang makakreate ng lesson plan. Where okay. mas, ma, mas maano natin, mas makikater natin yung needs ng mga learners natin. Tama. So, saan siya bagay? Primary grade or intermediate grade? So, yung baser sa ano, sa mga verb... Hey, na ginagamit doon parang mas bagay na po siya sa ano sa higher grades ka intermediate na okay. yes sir sa so, for grade 4 5 and 6 di ba yes sa so, intermediate grade sir oh kasi more on basic ano yan eh ang education muna yung sa kindergarten and primary years okay so ladies and gentlemen maraming salamat po ma'am ang um, Josie Rapay Party. Ayos? So, ladies and gentlemen, ayan, so medyo pahirap na po ang ating discussion ngayong hapon. So, huwag kayong aalis at magbabalik kami. Okay? Thank you. Okay, so what's up there mga ka-eduk? Nagbabalik ang yung host, Cedric Kasensai. And time check, it's already 3.46 in the afternoon, okay? So medyo palalim ng palalim ang ating mga topics, ladies and gentlemen, okay? So sa mga viewers natin, kanina po, okay? Konting recap, we have the introduction about the torrents, okay? IQ test, okay? And the problem solving um, concept, okay? Diniscuss yung kanina ni Ma'am Nicole. And according naman kay Ma'am Josie, okay? So meron tayong creative framework. Which is part noon doon sa metacognitive part ng ating um, Bloom's Taxonomy, which is creativity. Kaya medyo mahirap po, mahirap-hirap na yung ating mga um, verbs na gagamitin for lesson planning. And kanina, sinabi ka ni Ma'am that it's more appropriate using this um, creative or problem-solving um, parts or methodologies sa integ... Uh, tama ba yun? Um, intermediate. Okay sa intermediate level grade 4, 5, and 6. Okay? So, ngayon naman, ladies and gentlemen, pag-usapan naman natin ang creative problem solving or what we call the CPS. So, ito. Isa pa to. Masakit pa sa, sa ulo. <laughs> okay, so, ladies and gentlemen, okay, I'm now giving the floor to our next discussant. We have Ma'am Angeline Formenta. Ma'am, take it away. So, good afternoon, mga ka-edu. Um, this afternoon, I will discuss to you the creative problem solving. So, what is creative problem solving? It is an intentional process for solving problems and discussing opportunities. It is a way of um, using creativity to develop or create um, solution to solve the problem. Dito, yung sabi nga kanina ni, nila ni Cole, yung problem solving, hindi na lang to yung basta-basta na um, re-resolvahan natin yung mga problema. Dito, mas ang um, gagamitin natin yung isip natin, yung higher thinking natin upang um, mas um, makagawa or maka-find or maka-create tayo ng innovative solution that can solve our problem. Okay. Okay, let's proceed, ma'am. So, uh, as... So, Osborne's checklist, the origin of the classical brainstorming, is the root of creative problem solving or CPS. There are a variety of general structures, define problem, generate possible solutions, select and implement the best which can be found extensively in several different academic traditions. So, bago nga po, ang yung creative problem solving is nag-root siya sa classical brainstorming 
uh, which is Osborne checklist. Okay. Let's proceed. Then, this creative problem solving was developed by Alex Osborne's an American advertisement executive and educator and Dr. Disney Parnes, which is an American psychologist and educator. So, dati nga po, meron na tayo ng Osborne Parnes Creative Problem Solving Process, which um, which is the classify, I clarify, ideate, and develop, and implement. So, we have two types of thinking, which are divergent thinking and convergent thinking. So, when we say divergent thinking, this is a type of thinking we do when solving abstract or new problem. So, this divergent thinking, it is the process of generating lots of possibilities and potential solution to um, to solve our problem. So, itong divergent thinking dito, nag-generate or gumagawa or nag-iisip tayo ng mga potential, mga maraming potential solution na pwede natin gamitin upang ang masolusyonan natin yung problema. Then, when we say convergent thinking, it is a type of thinking we do when solving well-defined. So, um, so, in divergent thinking, sabi nga natin, nag-generate tayo, nag-iisip tayo ng mga ang um, lots of potential solution. Mm-hmm. And sa convergent thinking, sa lahat ng mga na-identify, mga na-create natin na solution, pipili lang tayo ng isa which yes. we think is the promising one who can solve our problem. Yun Tama. po yung pagkakaiba. Nakuha po mga ka-eduk. Yeah, puha na. Diretso na. Go! Okay, well said. Yes. So, the following stages is based on Van Gundy in 1988. Description is a very brief skeleton of a very rich process process showing it in its full 6 by 2 Wasting out si mga brush eh. <laughs> Wasting out ka no? Okay, diretso. <laughs> so, these are the 6 stages of creative problem solving which are math finding, data finding, problem finding, idea finding, solution finding, and acceptance finding. So, what is math finding? Ang um, mass finding is synthesize yourself or scan search for issues, concern, challenges, opportunities that need to be tackled. So in this stage, we will identify our goals or what is our um, what is the challenge or problem that we like or we want to work on. Um, mm-hmm. pipili tayo ng um, problem kung ano ba yung gusto nating masolusyonan. Yung yeah. po yung stage 1. Okay, that's mess finding. Okay, let's proceed, ma'am. So, in divergent techniques include wouldn't it be nice if and wouldn't it be awful if. So, yun nga po, ang uh, na-discuss na natin kanina yung sa divergent techniques. So, sa mess finding, um, sa divergent techniques, um, dito tayo mag-aano kung um, paano kaya kung ganito um, Kung ganito, eto na lang, ganun yeah. po. Then, in convergent <coughs> techniques naman, include the identification of hotspots or highlighting expressed as as a list of in what ways might. So, dito sa convergent, diretso na tayo. Ano ba? Ano ba yung um, gusto kong um, masolusyonan na problema? Kung baga, kukuha tayo ng, pipiliin natin kung ano ba ano yung mas naiinteresa yes. natin at yung goal natin. Yun. Mama, ipapaliwanag ko kung saan talaga ito ginagamit. Isang beses ko lang itong ginamit. Mama, i-reveal ko yung sekreto. Okay, let's proceed, ma'am. So, the stage 2 is the data finding. Gather information about the problem. So, dito sa stage 2, di ba ma- meron na ang um, nalaman na natin sa stage 1 kung ano yung gusto natin ang um, gawa ng solusyon na problema. Sa stage 2, um, magagathered na tayo ng um, data kung um, ano ba ito, ano yung situation nito, or what is the background of the issue or the problem. So, what are the facts, questions, data, or feelings that are involved in the problem. Sa yun po. 
Okay, ito na. Pakita yung techniques. Yan. So, paano yan? So, the, sa divergent techniques includes the 5Ws Yan. H. Who, why, what, when, where, and how. So, yun nga po, divergent thinking na naman. Dito, um, mag-iisip na naman tayo kung ano, 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 saan, sino, pa, um, kailan, Mm-mm. kung tungkol sa problema. Yes. Then, sa convergent techniques, include the identifying hotspots or mind mapping to sort and classify the information gathered. Pag sinabi po bagang mind mapping, um, dito, um, we will put the possible solution or mga data kung saan mag-i-picture natin or magkakaroon tayo ng big picture kung alin yung the best way na dapat natin gamitin. Yep. Let's proceed. Okay. So, the stage 3. Problem finding. It converts a fusy statement of the problem into a broad statement more suitable for idea finding. So, yun nga po. Nalaman na natin yung background or situation of the problem. So, dito, ikaklarify na natin kung ano yung problem. Um, what is the problem that really needs to be focused on and what is the concern that really needs to be addressed. Dito, yeah. ikaklarify na natin kung ano yung pinaka, pinaka problema sa um, isyong ito. Yun okay. Yeah. Techniques. Pasok. So, sa techniques, <laughs> divergent techniques include asking why, bakit, yeah. and the repeatable question and five Ws dito mm. pa rin sa divergent techniques. Bakit? Bakit ito naging problema? Mm-mm. Ano? Ano? Ano yung naging mm. cause nito? Paano? Then, uh, paano yan susolusyonan? Mm. Medyo mahirap-hirap na yan. Okay? Sige lang, ma'am. Ano pa yung, then, ano pa yung sunod na technique? Sa converge naman tayo. <laughs> Diyan, sa converge. <laughs> hi- highlighting, highlighting again, reformulation of problem statements to meet the criteria that they contain only one problem and no criteria. So, yun na naman, highla- highlighting kung ano ba talaga yung pinaka <coughs> problema at i-review natin kung etong problema ba to is ito yung pinaka main goal na gustong masolusyonan at dito magpo-formulate na tayo kung ano yung best solution. Okay, let's proceed. Ito. For stage 4, idea finding, it mm. generate as many idea as possible. Dito, ang um, sa idea finding, magje-generate na tayo ng mga ideas kung saan mag-iisip tayo kung um, paano um, what are the possible solution for how to solve the problem? Dito, um, um, kakalap na tayo, um, mag-iisip na tayo ng maraming solution kung ano yung mga possible or potential solution na pwede nating ang um, mai-apply to solve the problem. Tama. Okay? Sige ma'am, techniques pakita natin sa, sa mga viewers natin. Medyo may rap-rap na, ayan na. Okay. Pasok? So, divergence, so, divergence using any of a very wide range of idea generating techniques. So, yun nga po sa divergence dito, um, papasok yung mga inisip natin ng mga problema or solution para may mga ma- pagpipilian tayo. Tapos sa convergence, convergence can again involve hotspots or mind mapping the combining of different ideas. Sa convergence dito, um, um, Susuriin na natin yung mga naisip natin na potential and possibilities na solution na pwede natin i-apply. Kung saan, dito, pipili na tayo kung alin yung the best way or promising one na pwede natin ma-apply to solve the problem. Okay. Ayan. For stage 5, solution finding. Generate and select obvious evil way criteria. Dito sa stage 5, dito na tayo magse-select and strengthen solution. Di ba sa stage 4, meron na tayong mga na-identify, na-generate na mga ideas. At dito, dito na tayo pipili ng the best one or best solution na we think would, um, would solve the problem. And how can we strengthen the solution? So, 
how can you select the solution to know which one will work best? So, yun na nga po yung sinasabi ko dito sa stage na to. Ang sa lahat na na-formulate natin, na-generate natin ideas, pipili na tayo kung alin yung the best one. Okay. Ano Stage 6. <coughs> For the last stage is acceptance finding. It is formulate a plan of action, determine your need, obstacles, or difficulties, and specific short and long-term steps. Dito, um, magpa-plan na tayo for action. Diba sa stage 5, nakapili na tayo. Ngayon, sa stage stage 6, um, dito na tayo magpa-plan kung paano natin ma apply at what are all the action steps that need to take place in order to implement our solution. Dito na tayo magte-take ng action to solve our problem. And that's all po. Okay. Tapos na ma'am? Gusto mo uminom ng tubig? There. So the six stages. <laughs> okay, sige ma'am. Review mo ulit. <laughs> so the six stages of creative problem solving are mess finding, data finding, problem finding, idea finding, solution finding, and acceptance finding. Ayan. Thank you very much, Ma'am Angeline for Menta. Ayan. So, masyadong na-elaborate ni Ma'am. Sabi ko, ikaw na bahala dito. <laughs> joke lang. Okay, so anyway, thank you very much, Ma'am. So, di- detail yan yung pagkaka-explain niya, guys. Okay? Nandiyan po yung converging, <laughs> yung, di- yung diverging, ano yan. Okay, yung converging and diverging techniques. Okay, so sabi ko kanina sa inyo, ipa- ipa- i-reveal ko ngayon yung sekreto neto. Okay, bago tayo mag-break. Okay. Kayo, kasi mong malaban yung sekreto sa pagturo nito. Saan ba ito makikita? Ang tanong. Saan ba ito gagamitin? Yan yung pinaka ano yan eh. Pinakatanong dito. Kasi ito mga to guys, napagdaanan nyo to. <laughs> Imposible hindi nyo ito napagdaanan. ba? Kaya kayo ngayon nakakapasa sa ano yan. Kahit pa paano, nakaka, nakaka, ano yan, nakaka-ride on sa university. <laughs> sa dami ng trabaho sa university. Kasi napagdaanan nyo itong lahat. Because kung hindi nyo ito napagdaanan, masisira ulo nyo. Freshman pa lang kayo. Ibig sabihin, hindi kaya ng inyong metacognitive skills. So, since kayo nasa higher education, alam nyo na to. Okay, hindi na kayo masyadong stressful. Yung iba kasi na medyo na stress mentally stress, hindi nila ito masyadong napagdaanan. Okay, so i-reveal natin yung kung saan ba to magagamit. Okay, tingnan natin. Sabi ni Ma'am Ganina dito, unang-una, mess finding. Okay, dito tayo sa techniques. Una kong tatanungin sa inyo, sino ba ang gagawa dito, estudyante or teacher? Ano, kamusta? Pag nating sa learning, teaching learning process, sino ba magtatrabaho? Si teacher or si learner? Learner. Learner? Okay. Actually, pareho sila. <laughs> Kasi teaching dash learning process. So, ibig sabihin, magtatrabaho no. dalawa. Okay. So, tama yung sabi ni Mamda, estudyante talaga yung mag-generalize, hindi yung teacher. Estudyante magtatrabaho, pero sino si teacher dito? Si teacher po yung diverging factor. Una, sabi dyan, wouldn't it be nice if? Yan. Wouldn't it be awful if? Yan yung maganyang uri ng tanong. Yan po yung gagawin ng teacher. Si teacher po ang magtatanong yan. Anong gagawin ng estudyante pupunta sa convergent techniques? Include identif- identification of hotspot. Okay. Uh, ano, ano ibig sabihin na ito? Na, uh, pagkatapos ng inyong ano yan, ng, for example, uh, sa, <clears throat> sa subject nga ninyo na English or let's say science. Okay. Yung teacher po, supposedly, papasok siya as a facilitator okay, para ma-generalize yung estudyante yung topic for the day. So, papasok si teacher dito, mess finding. Okay? Ayan, bago nakalagay dyan, mess finding. Si teacher po magpapacilitate kung ano yung mga kinakailangan ng estudyante. Okay? Na, um, let's say, material. So, what's your sabi dyan, sensitize yourself, scan, search, issue, concern, challenges, opportunities. Ibig sabihin, uh, trabaho dito ni teacher is to provide. What is the materials? What is the, uh, let's say, yung venue ba conducive for learning? Kaya, for example, manginangyari na ganito eh. Yung topic is about um, sa living things. Yung ginawa ng teacher, <laughs> nagpa-drawing ng dahon. <laughs> Sabi ko, wag ka nang drawing ng dahon. Bakit nga mali? Mali yun. Bakit? Ano dapat mong gawin? Since that's science, dapat pinalabas mo yung estudyante, look around sa surroundings. Ang daming dahon dyan. Ba't <laughs> magpapadrawing ng dahon? Hindi naman yung subject, arts. 
the subject is science. Mali ba nalang kung ang subject mo is arts? Pwede rin. Balik rin mo lang. Kukuha ka ng dahon, ginawa nyo to sa arts, tapos pinatala nyo sa color. Yeah, so the teacher is the one actually giving the students all of the mess. <laughs> so bala yung estudyante maganap, i-provide mo lang. Ikaw lang mag-provide. Ang problema na ito, kung ang, ang teacher masyadong strict, um, dapat nga kung, kung ano ngayon nandyan niya na yan. Actually, you are um, limiting the freedom. Okay? The academic freedom of students. Dapat kasi, the more dis- the resources sa university, much better. Kaya nga kayo pag nagre-research, ang sinasadya sa inyo, limit lang ay minimum of 10 or 5. And mas madami pa, mas maganda, di ba? Kasi mas, mas, mas lalakas yung inyong um, evidence pagdating sa sources, okay? So, ito yung f- mess finding. Ito trabaho talaga ni teacher mag-provide. Uh, ngayon, sino yung maghahanap? Si student. Alam nga naman, ikaw pa maghanap, tinaw mo na, ikaw pa maghanap. Siyempre, student naman, di ba? So, that's teaching learning process. Sa so, stage 2, okay, that's uh, data finding, ayan na. So, ang tanong dito sa inyo, importante ba ang direct teacher supervision? sa mga ganitong activities. Yes or no? Ano sa tingin nyo, guys? Ano yan? Ma'am Angie, sa tingin mo, importante ba dito yung direct supervision? Yes, sir. Yan. Nakakatakot kasi kung lalo na sa tour, nako po. Hmm. Okay, ngaya, um, yung group 1 ngayon pupunta doon, pupunta dito sa, ano yan, sa gallery part, uh, kung sensei na nagrangup, hindi hmm. <laughs> na naanap ng teacher. Kaya yung teacher dapat, ang um, dapat siya tutok kahit po yan ay group activity because di natin alam kung sa mga estudyante kayo na yan ay nidurugsingan ng bullpen. <laughs> may direct supervision yan eh. Okay? So sabi dito, sa divergent technique, yan, sino magtatanong? Si teacher na naman. Trabaho yan ni teacher. Yan. Who, what, where, when? And how? Okay? So importante yan. Tapos, sino sasagot niya mga question na yan? Si estudyante. Nakalagay naman dyan include identifying hotspot mind mapping to sort classify information pag si teacher nagtanong regarding ng isang subject or sa isang concept for example sa science okay so ladies and yeah, mga bata okay kanina tayo ay gumawa ng isang experiment or activity so for example yung topic niyo is about um, textures okay so yung texture smell measurement shape size tapos yung mga bata binigyan mo lang tingi isang uri ng dahon or let's say tingi, tingi yeah, ano yan? Ibang uri ng mga prutas. Okay? And then, sabi mo doon, okay, since tapos na tayo sa ating activity, okay, we are done with our activity, we're now going to classify, yan, what are these leaves? Okay? Okay? Characteristics according to their, number one, size. O, pupunta yung bata doon sa board, ilalagay niya anong size niya, ilalagay yung measurement niyan. Ano ba yun? Hugis pa bilog, hugis pa oblong, o hugis pa mariwan, ay, kung ano yun, sorry, kung hugis ano yun, five fingers ba yan, five leaves, di ba? Para mga ganun. Tapos, um, yung naman sa texture, kung yan ba ay rough or smooth, di ba? Ginawa nyo na to, yes or no? Uh, ang problema kung si teacher lahat gumawa. <laughs> Siya ano sa divergence? Siya pa sa convergence? Nako po, ano, ano, ano nangyari sa estudyante? Wala, viewer. <laughs> viewer lang siya. <laughs> Congratulations, ma'am. You got it. We sit. Dapat si estudyante magtatrabaho eh. Okay? Then, of course, dito po sa stage <clears throat> 3, that's problem finding. Okay? Ito po, dito po naubos yung oras ng teachers generalization. Bakit? Dapat talaga dito ang makapag-generate ng information or let's say ng concept is the student. Kasi ang problema dyan, Kung yung teacher dahil stress na kasi time pressured na siya, susunod na yung next ano yung teacher, hindi pa rin kayo makarating do. It's just a matter of art of questioning. So, nakalagay ba dyan yung 5 W's and H? <clears throat> Itanong nyo muna kasi si estudyante yung madadali. Sino? Ang pumatay kayo sa the joke lang. Uh, sino? Kaya ngayon, sino ang mga characters? Who are the characters in the story? Alam nga naman, di ka makasimbag. Nako po, lahat yan, mag, lahat yan sasagot. Okay, for example, what is the color of the apple? Oo, uh, lahat yan sasagot. Red, 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 red. Uh, Kaya pa yan, mini, mini, mag, may bisara ka. Carnation. <laughs> Social. Okay. So, pag yun mga sagot na yun, okay, ay na, uh, sorry, yung mga questions na yun, nasagutan ng bata, dere-derecho sa converging factor. Okay, which is yan, include highlighting, again, reformulation of problem statements, meet the criteria that they contain only one problem and no criteria. Ano ibig sabihin nun? Okay? Mabubuo na yung konsepto. Mabubuo na. Remember, this is finding problem. Okay? So, in, 
karamihan kasi ng, ano yan, ng mga estudyante, pagkatapos doon sa second part, this one, sa find, finding data, tinatamad na. So, dapat si teacher, eager pa siya para magturo sa bata. Huwag tatama rin yung guro kasi hindi pa tapos yung topic. Pagdating dito sa stage 4, generate as many, ayan, many possible ideas. Technique. Ano gagawin ni teacher? Using any of very wide range of idea and generating techniques. So, ang trabaho dito ni teacher is pasagutin yung bata sa lahat ng uri or let's say possible way. Kaya minsan may mga tanong na mga actually malalayo naman talaga yung sagot. Di ba? May mga sagot ang mga estudyante malalayo naman. Ipapasukin nyo lang. Malay mo kasi mag pa yan. Okay? So, wag, wag, wag nyo ipapaya yung estudyante na porket mali. Uh, ano yan? Masala. Babay na. Di na kang tro Tasala palan. Kawawa yung bata. Sa converging naman, okay, sabi dito, can again involve hotspot on mind mapping and find different ideas. Saan nyo ba to guys actually nakikita? Kapag nagpapagroup activity, ito kasi yung ginagawa ng estudyante pag nag-group activity. Okay? So, yung output nila, ini-present nila doon sa board or let's say to the class. Okay? Okay? Nangyari is nag-provide yung teacher ng, ng card sa likod, yung card, nakalagay yung mga tanong, nakalagay yung mga sasagutin or let's say yung activity. Sino magtatrabaho niya? Si estudyante. Okay? Bala na si estudyante dyan. Because this is actually a problem um, solving ano yan, uh, methodology na kung saan dapat talaga po yung estudyante ang magtatrabaho, not the teacher. Okay? Provided. Kung kayo ay talaga ang uh, nagtuturo sa, alam din yung mga estudyante, medyo matataas ang IQ. Kasi tatanungin ko si ma'am, ma'am, pwede ba to sa mga lower section? Ma'am Angie, pwede ba to sa mga lower section? Sa mga medyo mababa ang IQ na estudyante? Pwede naman siguro, sir, basta may may guidance ng teacher. May guidance ng teacher. But with the sake of time, sa tingin mo, kakayanin ng estudyante sa lower Hindi section? Po. Yun nga yung sinasabi ko Hindi eh. Oo. So, better to gamitin sa mga SOF or sa higher class sections kasi medyo matataas or mabibilis yung kanilang pick-up. Diba? May mga ganun talaga po na hindi kahit gustong mo man sabihin na gusto ko rin itong iparanas doon sa estudyante ko sa lower section. Oo, busilak ang iyong puso. Ang problema nga ni, it's not efficient. Yari, kaubos oras mo, diba? Maganda naman yung hangarin mo. Di nga pwede, ang kulit. <laughs> May mga ganyang bagay na dapat i-consider ng teacher, okay? At dito sa stage 6, yan acceptance finding. Okay, dito po papasok yung generalization. The, the most important part actually of the topic before yung yung pandli nang nagawain. Okay, kung na ko na kung meron kayong na encounter niyan sa lesson plan, pandli nang nagawain ha. 'Di ba? Meron kayong na encounter niyan. Uh, guys, pandli nang hindi po pandli lang nagawain ha. Baka baka iba yung nakalagay doon na. <laughs> pandli nang nagawain. Okay, it's just a ano yan, parang uh, supplemental activities for further development of the skill of the students bago doon sa evaluation. Minsan kasi di yan nangyayari. Alam niyo kung bakit? Wala nang oras. Naubos nung mga estudyante yung time sa group activities. Si teacher ma, nagparapakichismis halwas, napanglingaw na. <laughs> time na pala no. Oo, oh, estudyante. So, dito sa acceptance finding, kalarado naman dyan na actually, it's it's just a matter of um, uh, tawag ba dito? Uh, recapturing all the information gathered by the students. Okay? Kung kayo, and then a reflection kung yung ba ay tama. Ngayon, the deciding factor is that si sir palagi, si ma'am palagi, si teacher palagi yung magsasabi ng katotohanan sa dulo. Kung yung nakuha ng mga estudyante information tama or mali. With the aid of all the activities na nangyari ang tatanong teacher, oh ngayon mga bata, ano sa tingin ninyo ang ibig sabihin ng ating pinag-usapan ngayon or pinag-aralan ngayong hapon. Di ba sasabihin yung estudyante? That's a generalization. Di ba? Ngayon, ang technique naman dyan, kung ang estudyante nyo talaga hindi na, makapag, hindi na makapag-isip kasi pagod na pagod na, kasi ang dami rin subject ng estudyante. Yung technique ng teacher, ginagawa yan ng mga teacher eh, gumagawa yan ng isang, isang sentence, putol-putol, walang, may mga missing words, pero isang sentence yan, okay mga bata, basahin natin ang nasa board, Okay. General sa mga bata. Okay. So, bigyan ninyo ng mga nawawalang salita. Oh. Until makuha ng estudyante yung general information. Actually, yun yung nakalagay sa inyong lesson plan. Hmm. Pero, ikaw teacher, ikaw lang talaga yung tumulong. 
sa bata. Hindi po yung bata ang tinulungan ng teacher. Ah, ay, hindi, hindi po yung teacher yung tinulungan ng bata. Ah. Si teacher ang tutulong sa bata. Nakakalo kapag nabaliktad yan. <laughs> Ayun, teacher, sir, sala ba ni ka? <laughs> Nagsupog. <laughs> Mga wali ka na si teacher. Ma'am, baliktad po. Jesus Kumar Yosef. Yan, practice kasi. Importante mag-practice sa bahay. Okay? So, yun yung guys yung gusto ko lang i-share sa inyo regarding dito sa ano yan. Kasi ito talaga po yung katotohanan na nangyayari sa loob ng classroom. Si divergence, si teacher. Si convergence, si estudyante. All of those techniques actually come on each other hand in hand. They go hand in hand. Hindi po siya pwedeng... Tanggalin mo yung divergent, ma'am. Pwede ba yun mangyari? Hindi. Di ba? Tanggalin mo yung convergence. Mangyayari ba yun, learning? Hindi rin. So, napaka-importante niyan sa problem solving Okay, skill development or dito sa tinatawag nating CPS. Congratulations. Okay, thank you very much, Ma'am Ang um, Angeline Ang um, Pormento. Ayos, Ma'am? Okay na ba? Okay. So, nakainom ko na ng tubig. <laughs> <laughs> Kapahinga kaya ako muna take over, okay? So ladies and gentlemen, huwag kayong aalis at meron pa kaming isang discussion or discussion na isusunod, okay? Huwag aalis po. 4.50 na. We'll be right back. Yes, okay, so what's up, Dirlit Mock Headed? This is your host, Cedric Asensai, and welcome back to our Bura Bura live stream. So, ladies and gentlemen, it's already 4.16 in the afternoon. So, patapos na aming discussion for today's topic regarding Module 18, which is Problem Solving and Creativity. So, kanina po, na-discuss po ni Ma'am Angeline yung CPS. Okay? Um, medyo, uh, tawag ba dito? Um, medyo critical yung pinag-usapan natin ngayong hapon. Kasi po, dito na po papasok yung skill po ng teacher. Right? So, hindi lang po dito all about the learning capabilities of a student or a learners but papasok din dito kung paano ni teacher okay uh, paano ni sir or ni ma'am magagawa ng tama para gamitin itong problem solving and creative uh, creativity skills okay in teaching so let's proceed na po sa ating next discussion okay we have ma'am Hana Teresa Tanay okay ma'am it's your turn na po so, hi mga ka -eduk. I am the last discussant for the Module 18. So, I will talk all about the Bransford Ideal Model. Next po, sir. Yan. So, Bransford Ideal Model. Bransford and Stein introduced idea as a problem-solving model that is able to improve the ability to think and improve skills in the problem-solving process. So, the ideal model, ideal model is a tool that helps the students objectively look at the scenario so that they can define the main problem, the, to explore the solutions, and eva evaluate of the effectiveness of the, um, of the solution in that problem. So, um, by teaching our learner of each step of the ideal model, our students will approach the problem with confidence. So, the idea, the ideal problem solving solving model includes and and they identify the problem, define the problem. Nagbabadali si Ma'am, narumuruman niya si Kuha niya. Narumuruman niya si Uno Kaleba, si Jowa niya. May Jowa ka na, Ma'am? Hindi, sir. Ah, hindi, Ma'am. Okay, sige. Meron. Oo. Nalai, sana di, Adit. Ma'am, papaklit. Hindi lang. Okay, sige, Ma'am. Diretso tayo. So, yeah, the Bransford ideal model is to identify the problem, define the problem, explore possible solution for the problem, apply solution to the problem, look at and learn from the effects of the solution. Next put, sir. Okay. So, na the first one is identify the problem. A problem can be identified through the, these different scenarios. First, 
the difference between what is observed and what is expected. The second one is the, the discrepancy between what we want and what we get. So, identify. So, means for the it means for the looking of the problem. So, there is no real way to create a solution in a problem unless hindi natin alam kung ano talaga yung problem nung scenario na yon. So, we must encourage our, our learner to identify first what is the problem. Yes. So, next is the define the problem. Try to accurate, accurately determine the cause of the problem. And once you understand your problem better, you should begin yourself better as well. So, in this, so define. Defi- define the problem means explaining the problem. So, like for example, yung, um, the ship is sinking or the boat is sinking. So, first, diba, we ma- if na-identify na natin yung problem, if second, we define na. Define the problem. So, like, meron siyang hole or yung meron siyang butas or like, meron siyang sa machine siya engine nagka problem so we define but nagkaroon ng problem na yun we define but nagkaroon ng ganun finding out where it came from yung problem yun. so next next is explore possible solution so this will be the most time consuming step in the process as a scientist you know that gathering information can be te- can be the juice so Mm-hmm. Take time to console with family, friends, colleagues, or someone who can help you explore possible solution in an biased manner. Once you feel like you have gathered enough information and have spoken with the right people, now you can attempt to apply your solution to the problem. So, dito na papasok yung brainstorming. Mm-hmm. So, you must um, look for the look or explore the alternative approach to solve the problem. So, um, dito na yung papasok yung brainstorming what what can be our goal, na ma- what our goals to solve the problem and um, think about different strategies Yan. na pa-apply mm-hmm. sa problem na yun. Okay. So, next, apply solutions to the problems. Apply the solution to the problems. Can I add to be? Stage four. Oh, no, sorry. Okay, Number four. Okay. <laughs> tulog, tulog yung ni operator. <laughs> so, problems very rarely resolve themselves. So, we need to take action and apply the solutions to the problem. So, di ba nagaling tayo, nagaling na tayo sa brainstorming, no what possible um, strategies na we will do to our problem. So we need to apply the solution na it, we need to apply it to the problem na. So yun na, once the strategy selected, it is important to apply the solution to the problem. So we anticipate possible outcomes and then act on the strategy. So yeah. anticipating po- possible outcomes can save you from actions you may regret later on. Quiet. Mm. <laughs> Taray ni Ma'am. <laughs> May pasaway na bata. Okay lang yan. Oo, huwag pagalitan. Normal yan. Sige, diretso Ma'am. So last is look last is look at and learn from the defects of the solution. Yes. I'm going. <laughs> Mamaya palapitin mo mamaya sa camera. Oo. Para makita niya sarili niya. <laughs> So last, look at look at and learn from the effects of the solution. So you may notice that this process can take a bit of time. However, the more you use this process, the more efficient it should become in your life. So then sometimes you may need to tweak your process a bit to adapt to the problem you are currently handling. So last, learn from the both process and your mistakes. So this is the final step in the ideal problem solving model so to look and learn from attempt to solve a problem so this final component is is we need to look the to look at the actual effects of your strategy and we must learn from that experience so yun, sometimes many parents or the teachers forget to 
forget these critical steps na pagka-solve na ng problem, hindi na natin siya parang wala nang style reflection about about the yung about the solution din sa problems sa strategies and what we learn from it. Diba? So you love to sir. That's it. Let's call it a day. That's all fun. Yes. <laughs> okay, <laughs> thank you very that. much. Ayan, so explain pa siya ano yan. Uh, napakalina ng explanation ni Ma'am Hana. Okay? So, dinandahan lang ni Ma'am kasi kanina sabi ko dandan. <laughs> Di pre-ok lang pati si Ma'am. Di, bali, Ma'am, kulaw yan. Adolescence. <laughs> Di bago ng boses. <laughs> okay, yan. Di, di si Mama concentrate kasi may, may mga chikiting pala dyan sa gilid niya. Lapit mo mamay sa camera para, para masaya. <laughs> okay, so thank you very much, Ma'am. Ang um, Hana Teresa Tanay. Okay, so clear naman yung explanation ni Ma'am eh. Okay, so ito pong mga... Ito, ito, ito lalo na tong huling topic. Okay, ito po yung nakakaligtaan minsan ng mga estudyante. Lalong-lalo na sa higher education. Kayo, pat hirap na hirap kayo dyan. Tandaan nyo lang to, ideal. Ba't hirap na hirap kayo? Tanggal, t- tandaan nyo lang to idea. First, ano ba problema? Okay. Ano ba problema muna? Ayan yung baby, oh. Hello? Hello? <laughs> ano pangalan? Sabi na, hi na. What, what is your name, though? Say hi. Babae, name? babae, baby girl. What is your name? <laughs> <laughs> My name is Shady. Okay, Sir Shady. <laughs> okay, thank you very much doon sa ating ano yan, chikiting, ano yan, discuss at maraming salamat. Babae, babae yan, girl. Ah, uh, girl siya. Eh, napapasa ko ulit. <laughs> lalaki, sir. Ah, lalaki. Okay, baby boy. Okay. Uh, kasi yung, yung anak ko kasi, ano yan eh. Baby girl, mukhang boy. <laughs> Kamukha ko. What's up? Yung pala yung baby, baby boy eh. Parang girl kasi mabay yung mukha. Baby boy. Uh, uh, and anyway, so, thank you very much. Ano pangalan na yung ano yan, yung baby boy? <laughs> um, Jam Jam. Ah, si Jam Jam. Okay. Yeah, so magiging vlogger yan pag laki kasi nakikita ka na nagla-live stream ka o live streamer yan pag laki. Okay, so balikan natin itong ano yan, <clears throat> itong ideal na diniscuss ni ma'am. Okay, pagkatapos yung ma-identify ang problema ninyo sa university, for example, define the problem. Pag sinabing define the problem, alamin mo kung yan na ba yung magiging mong problema. Okay, magre-research kayo, right? May research work kayo? O, oh, yan yeah, ito, tusundin nyo to. Define the problem, okay? Yan bang problema na yan, yan ba yun? Okay, kung yan ay yung problema na na-identify mo, define the problem. Okay, ibig sabihin, okay, aalamin mo dito sa problema or let's say sa question mo, kung ano ba yung mga pwedeng mangyari dyan. Kung ano ba yung mga pwedeng uh, makuha or let's say, ano ba yung advantages, ano ba yung mga disadvantages dyan. Kaya you're just going to define. In short, pag sa research ninyo, sa define the problem, yan po yung number one sa introduction. Diba? Problem. I-explain mo dun lahat yung overview ng mangyayari sa research. Yan po yun. Tapos letter E naman is explore possible solution for the problem. Methodology po yan. Solution. Methodology po yan. That's chapter 3. Okay? Yung, yung ID, papasok dyan yun sa chapter 1 ninyo and chapter 2. Okay? Kasi doon guys sa chapter 2, that's um, related literature and studies. Sa I naman, just going to... Um, explain the problem and then kung ano yung mga uh, gagamitin ninyong SOP. Okay? And sa letter E is pipili kayo ng tamang methodology. Yan po yung solution. Sa letter E naman po apply the solution, papasok yan po doon sa inyong chapter 4. Ibig sabihin, gagawin nyo na yung napili ninyong solution, mag-experimento na kayo. Or let's say, uh, gagamitin nyo na siya to solve or let's say to find out whether your hypothesis is correct or not. Yun po ang research. Kaya ka ngayon, kung kayo maging research, mga kapatid, may linawi natin to. Okay? So, baka kasi pag kayo researcher, ang iniisip ninyo, kung ano yung hypothesis ninyo, yun na yun. Hindi po. Kaya kayo gagamit ng mga certain methodologies or let's say solution to a particular problem to find out whether your hypothesis is correct or wrong. So, wag kayong magagalit or let's say wag kayong mahihiya sa sarili nyo or let's say wag kayong ano yan, mapaprostrate kung yung hypothesis ninyo mali. Ibig sabihin na prove ninyo based from your and methodologies na mali yung hypothesis, hypothesis ninyo or your educational guess. Okay lang yun at least na pagdaanan niya yung empirical uh, empirical ano yan, ang um, system or procedure. Ibig sabihin pinagdaanan talaga niya ng maayos gamit yung methods, hindi chamba. Tama? Kasi sa research palagi yung merong lalabas na doubt. 
Hmm. Meron yung duda, kaya nga yung research minsan dudable. Paano mo to nakuha ang sagot na to? Saan to galing? Yan yung palaging ta- itatanong sa inyo ng inyong ano yan. Ang uh, research advisor or teacher ninyo sa research. Paano mo ngaya kadinoko? Napono. Yan. So yung letter L naman is look at and learn from the effects of the solution. Papasok na to doon doon sa recommendation <laughs> sa, sa chapter 5. Tatandaan nyo lang yung idea, lo. meron akong key points na tinuroan ko na kayo. Kasi aram ko, pag sa research, <laughs> tarambling na kita. Alright, so importante kasi na meron lang pong techniques kasi dyan eh. Okay, kung nami-miss out ninyo yung mga bagay-bagay na yan, eto, sinabi ko sa inyo, use ideal in doing research work. Matutulungan kayo na ito. Hindi yan, hindi yan actually mahirap. Ang importante lang dito is you have to practice yourselves using this branch for ideal model. Lalong-lalo na gagamitin nyo sa pinakamataas na antas ng inyong pag-aaral. Yun na nga, yung research. Hindi kayo makagraduate. Pag wala kayong research, tandaan. Kahit kayo yung, kahit kayo yung uh, aspiring cum laude, pag wala kayong research, hindi po kayo makakagraduate. May <laughs> research one and two kayo. So ngayon, meron na kayong research, guys. Uh, ladies. Okay, so ngayon, dyan muna kayo sa I, D, and E. I, D, and E lang kayo. Ibig sabihin, hanapan nyo na yung problema Alamin yung problema, tapos pag tagpi, tagpiin niyo yung mga related literatures and studies, nga pala sa mga ka-eduk natin, bigyan ko kayo ng isang ano yan, special ano yan, technique. <laughs> Ito yan. Sir, saan ba magagamit yung related literature and studies? Actually, ganito lang yan. Yung mga ilalagay niyo dun sa chapter 2, it's either journals yan, okay, related, uh, related literatures, Okay, literatures po, ibig sabihin yan, uh, yung mga journals, yung mga articles, pa, yung mga na- nakukuha kung saan-saan na information, as long as legitimate. Pero yung ano yan, yung, yung studies, talaga pong mga ano siya, mga researches siya. Okay, ibig sabihin, kukuha, kukuha ka yan sa mga international journal, ano yan, um, sites, or sa library. Madami yan dito. Lalong-lalo, kung gagawin nyo lang is local. Okay, so ang isang technique dyan, guys, Pagdating dun sa Related Literature and Studies, actually, hindi nyo naman talaga magagamit yun ngayon. <laughs> Karamihan dyan, magagamit ninyo sa dulo na. Sa dulo nung inyong research. It's a supporting evidence from a statement you given. Okay? From your experiment. For example, nakakuha ka ng ganito ang uri ng information. Uh, based sa aming experiment, ganito yung nangyari. According to the methodology, ito yung nangyari, ganito. And based from the hypothesis that we've got, it's wrong. To support that statement, ilalagay nyo yun. According to ganyan, ay, wala na niyan kukontra. Kasi ibig sabihin, supportado siya nung statement na kinuha ninyo doon po sa related literature and studies. Pag meron pa niyang kumontra, ewan ko na lang, supportado na nga, kontra pa. Si Raulo rin kasi ano yan eh, mga panelist. Pero nang supporta, okay na siya. Hindi na po siya kailangan na niyang buwagin. Kasi matatag na yung inyong nakuwang information based from your experiment or sa study ninyo. Okay? So, yun lang po ang masasabi ko dito sa Bransford Ideal Model. Kasi, ito po yung medyo, medyo mataas na level ng ano yan eh, ng thinking strategies po dito po sa facilitating um, of learner center teaching. Yun nga lang, dapat po kasi dito, since we are, um, ano tawag po dito, promoting learner center teaching, ang problema dito sa Bransford Ideal Model is that, kung hindi ito guys, na ituro ng maayos estudyante, hindi yan matatapos yung ideal na yan. Idea lang yan, or ID, <laughs> or IDE. Hindi siya kumpleto. It should be ideal. Kaya nga ideal, kumpletuhin dapat yan. Sino magtatrabaho niyan, estudyante? Sino ngayon ang tutulong dyan? Teacher. Walang iba. Mm-mm. Subukan yung tanongin yung nanay niyo, ma, are you ideal? <laughs> Pakalasap pa ka ng magulang mo. <laughs> Puro ideal mo ngayon, pagsap na, na. Okay. Anyway, so mga ka-eduk, yan. So, tinuluhan ko lang ano yan. Uh, bigyan ng konting information ito. But anyway, diniscuss na kanina ni ma'am. Hindi ko na ulitin kasi napakalinaw naman po nung step. Di ba ma'am? Anong ayong pasunod-sunod natin ma'am ng step? Okay. Pa-review natin sa Bransford. Kamaman, Hana. Um, first is the... Sir, paano? <laughs> Ayan. First is the, the identify the problem, define the problem, explore possible solution for the problem, apply solution to the problem, and last, look at and learn from the effects of the solution. Yeah, so thank you very much, ma'am. And that is what we called 
ideal model. Yun lamang po, ladies and gentlemen. I think dito na magtatapos ang ating discussion for today's topic. So medyo napadami ang ating usapan. Pero sulit naman kasi ewan ko kung natrain ang utak ninyo. <laughs> Mag-isip ng napakataas. Okay, or say napakalalim. Kasi ito po talaga yung concern ng topic natin ngayon is to i-guide ang ating mga students kung paano gamitin ito pong nasa pinakamataas na antas po ng metacognitive thinking skills which is the problem and the creative thinking skills. Okay? So, ladies and gentlemen, okay, once again, ito po ang ating mga call discussion for today's topic. Okay? Huling bati na po sa ating mga discussion. Okay, let's start first with Ma'am. Nico, Ma'am, word of thanks po. Ano sa mga BN? Ay po, thank you for watching. <laughs> okay, ito talaga si Ma'am. Okay. Thank you sa mga kaginig, guys. Okay, thank you very much, Ma'am. Uh, wala ka mabisa shout out? Come on! Baka may gusto kang batiin? Shout out na lang sa B and Vanity Sir 3B. Okay, thank you very much, Ma'am Nicole Kayla Distura. Thank you very much, Ma'am. Okay, and of course, we have Ma'am Josie Rapay Barde, Ma'am. Word of thanks po. What's up, mga ka-eduk? Thank you po sa mga nanonood. Sana po may natutunan kayo ngayon. Okay, thank you very much, Ma'am Josie. Okay, maraming salamat po. Okay, Ma'am Angeline, come on! Thank you po sa lahat ng nanood. Sana may natutunan kayo. Shout out po kila Cristela Caganda po. Shout out right. kay Bargo. <laughs> okay, shout out sa inyo guys. Thank you very much, Ma'am Angeline Formenta. Okay, and our last discussion po, we have Ma'am Hannah Teresa Tanay. Ma'am, word of thanks. Hello po. Hello po. Thank you sa nanood. And shout out sa mga youths na hindi pa nagpaparegister. Nagpaparegister <laughs> <laughs> na. <laughs> sa ano? Go twice link. Yes, extended po kasi siya sir. Yung alin? Ang um, pag-register sa Kamelet. Ah, okay. So yan, at least ma'am na-plug na ni ma'am. Okay, maraming salamat po. Ma'am Hannah Teresa Tanay. So ladies and gentlemen po, yung mga youth po pala na hindi pa rehistrado, okay, extended po siya. Okay, sa lahat din po ng mga may plaka po na nagtatapos sa zero, extended din po siya <laughs> hanggang December. Isa ako doon. Alright, so maraming salamat. <laughs> LTO for your extension because... Uh, it's due to the crisis right now, which is the pandemic. Okay, so sa lahat mo na hindi pa nagre-register sa Comelec, register na po. That's um, for you to vote in this coming 2022 election. Makiisa po tayo, okay? Practice your right to vote or suffrage. Maraming salamat sa ating mga discussion for today's topic. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, we have Ma'am Nicole Kaila Distura. We have Ma'am Josie Rapay Barde. Ma'am Angeline Formento. And Ma'am Hannah Teresa Tanay. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, sila po ang ating bumubuo ng uh, discussions dito po sa ating Module 18. And that is the Problem Solving and Creativity. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, this is your host, CJ Kasantay. At nag-iiwan ng isang katagang. Remember, in this time of pandemic, hmm, para matuto ng malapit, di adet, magbapaknip. Maraming salamat, guys. Thank you very much. And good afternoon to everyone. God bless po and keep safe. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye, sir. <laughs> Bye, sir. Thank you. Bye. -bye. Thank you, sir. Napat pinagpalag niyo.